Hi, my name is Jane Pierre, and this is what the Lord has done for me. I was born in Haiti, Port-au-Prince, Haiti, the capital city, um, to two Seventh-day Adventist parents. Um, I <laughs> was a very little child, and um, I have one brother. We are one year and eight months apart, and so we're pretty close to each other. Um, unlike many children, I wasn't jealous when he was born. Um, but really, really enjoyed to have a little baby brother. Um, in Haiti, the house that I really remember being in, um, we were surrounded by fruit trees, mangoes, coconut, um, avocado trees. We had a, a yard that we could play around in, and um, it was, yeah, I guess just a tropical experience. Um, we walked to school. Uh, it was a Seventh-day Adventist school um, and I'm very thankful for that because um, in that environment we had a better education than most. Um, in Haiti the, pri the public schools aren't um, that good and so when you do get opportunity to be in a private school, you're, you're set up for a better um, educational experience. And both of my parents, my mom was a kindergarten teacher and my dad was a teacher in all levels, um, especially in college, university. And so um, with that as well, they were, they were also known, well known. And um, we, I believe, were <laughs> pretty much just living a life that was respected and um, in that community. Um, however, you probably know from, if you have any Haitian friends or anything, that in Haiti there's a lot of um, witchcraft, magic, and voodoo. So I remember at times it was dangerous even to walk <laughs> to school. Um, one time the, our babysitter and myself and my brother, we were walking to school and um, there was a lady in America, it would probably just be some type of mental condition, but there everything is just seen as spiritually related. And um, she was unclothed and her hair was all crazy and she was throwing rocks at anybody who passed by. Um, and so I remember our babysitter putting us on her back and we had to quickly run to school. Um, so there's always something very interesting happening, um, even at a door. There could be a chicken head cut off and blood splattered, knowing that you were targeted for, for something. Um, but other than that, <laughs> it was a pretty um, okay childhood. Um, it was about when I was seven years old that I remember my parents going to America, flying over to America. My, my dad had family over in Canada and the U.S., and my mom had her older sister in the U.S. And so if from, the, from the time my brother and I were born, they knew that we would be heading to the U.S. Um, it was getting really dangerous with, um, under the dictators, like Papa Doc, Baby Doc. And I was told that shortly after I was born, um, there, there was a, a hit on somebody, on a, on a general, and the person was killed right in front of my mother. And um, that stopped her from being able to produce milk. And so because of instances like this and like, having rapists around, just soldiers were free to do anything against the law. Um, and so um, my parents were traveling to the United States to see if we would be able to um, move over, over there. And um, my mother, on her last trip, she came just a few days before 9-11. So very thankful for God's protection in that. And um, we, we didn't tell, at least I didn't, I don't remember telling anybody, um, that we were leaving. Um, I, my brother, he remembers crying um, in those last moments. Because um, we did, you know, we had established friends there and... Um, we were going to the church school and um, just taking up everything and leaving to the U.S. That plane ride, or right before that, I remember, because my, my dad didn't go with us that first time. 
and um, just seeing him staying, staying behind. Um, as we went onto the plane, um, we could go from the outside back then before 9-11. And um, we, we climbed up. It was a very scary experience as little children. Um, but we knew that God had something for us. We moved in with our, well, my aunt, my mom's sister, older, older sister. And we really started from, <laughs> I guess, the bottom. Very poor. Um, she, my aunt, had five children of her own. And in the house as well, there was the, the owner of the house, and he had his own children. And then it was my mom and my, my brother and I. So it was a lot of children in that house. Um, and we, it wasn't exactly the environment for a Christian family. Um, we listened to, that's when I was first introduced to um, pop music, rap, um, hip hop, um, rock, and, um, and a lot of influences at school as well. Um, and a couple traumatic experiences happened in that household. But God was good. He allowed us to move out. Um, we were sharing a room with one of my cousins. Um, but he, he allowed us to get our own place in a sense. We were living after that in the cellar of our, um, my best friend's house. Um, their mom allowed us to rent up in their cellar. And um, from these times, I remember we didn't have a microwave, a fridge. Um, it was just our bedding and our clothes. I don't even know how we were able to eat really on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but um, eventually, my dad was able to come. And then our visa expired, so we had to go back to Haiti. We, we had um, family devotions pretty much every single night. Um, even when my dad wasn't here at first, um, we, my, my dad being the priest of the house, um, he would lead it out with, with songs and um, we would sing maybe about seven songs um, and read some scripture. We are a pretty musical family in a sense. Um, my dad singing um, baritone, my mom with alto, myself with soprano, my brother with tenor, um, baritone. And um, I really enjoyed those times. I'm, I'm thankful that I had that foundation, even from Haiti. Um, and then tr coming to the U.S., I was reading in, in French and in English um, the French hymnal, the Ime Louange, and um, the English hymnal, I had to learn the scriptures in English. Um, I remember in Haiti, um, I was, I used to memorize a lot of scripture. And so when I came to the U.S., it was a challenge to then learn them in English. Um, but that was a, a very good foundation for me and, and my brother. It, it's true, the scripture, that if you do train a, a child in the way that they should go, um, they will not depart from it, even if, or the word will not depart from our own heart. Um, even if we do tend to stray away and do other things that God wouldn't have us to do and that would bring us um, disappointment and sadness. Um, we had gone back to Haiti and we stayed there about a month. And I remember my parents um, saying that we should pray so that we wouldn't have to lie <laughs> to immigration um, for us to be able to to become permanent re residents in, in the U.S. Um, and that, that's really something that's good too, that parents can give a project, a task to their children to um, have them learn to trust in God and, and see that He can deal with big situations. And I remember we stayed in that embassy for so many hours, we're so hungry, and um, when it was our turn, they called us, we, we went up to the window, and I was just praying and praying, God, please help us so that we won't have to lie. And the person asked us a lot of questions, but um, God was faithful. There were no temptations for us to, to have to lie. And we got our papers and um, we were able to come to the U.S. Now came the time for us to go to middle school. 
And I remember every single year, um, I would cry <laughs> the first day of school because I missed my brother. Like I said, we were very close in age, a year and eight months apart. And <laughs> every day <laughs> I would cry um, because I wanted to be close to him. I, I didn't, I was still learning English in a sense. And um, he was my best friend. <laughs> we shared friends. Um, and to, to the point that my best friend was his best friend and his best friend was my best friend. And um, my brother and I, we would share rooms and um, even switch up rooms every Tuesday. Um, and um, at school, I, I didn't get that time to be able to be with him. Um, and he was the popular one, <laughs> even though he was the younger brother, but um, he was very lively and energetic. People loved to be around him. Whereas I was shy, I didn't come out of my bubble. Um, it took a lot for people to really even know that I could speak. <laughs> um, at times people thought I was mute. And um, so I didn't have that many friends. Um, but that was fine with me. I connected with the people that were there, um, the, the few friends that I did have. I connected with them um, on, a, on a deeper level. And um, eventually by high school, it was a darker time in my life. Um, I hated going to school. Uh, although I did well in school, I was a straight A student. Um, but uh, the home life was declining a lot um, with my parents and um, I didn't have any security um, because of that. Um, and I don't think they knew that how much it, it affected us. Um, I went more into my schoolwork, got very serious and I would stay up late doing homework and putting my all into the work um, at home, whereas my brother would go out with friends and he started straying as well and um, getting into smoking and, and drugs and, um, and for myself uh, going with guys. And so there was a lot of double living and um, my parents were going through their own thing, and so all of us were going in our different paths. And at school, it seemed like you know, things were going well, successful, but really inside, it was darkness. Um, but thankfully, God still had a stake in my own heart. Um, at church, we were very active. There was a point that just about every single day we were at church. Um, on Sundays for Pathfinders, on Mondays for Bible Bowl, <laughs> on um, Wednesdays for prayer meeting, Thursdays for something else, <laughs> Fridays for Vespers, and Saturdays for Sabbath for church. And so um, we were able to be active at church, um, which definitely kept me. Um, my closer friends were at church, and um, they got the better part of me. Um, and I appreciated that there were a lot of people that poured into me, um, a lot of church mothers and church fathers um, who, who saw how vacillating I was and who put time to really ask me questions and um, give me advice um, and show me the way that I should go. Um, this was at Cambridge SDA Church, a church I grew up in for 19 years. And um, they really, really um, shaped me into the woman that I am today. Um, I learned a lot with presentations, um, with um, team building, with leadership. In high school, uh, my friends at Okay, so I kind of started getting out of my bubble in high school. Um, I joined 
the track team, and I was a, a 100 yard, 200 um, sprinter. And, um, and so in that environment, my friends were mostly Haitians. Um, but then, because of my grades, I was in AP classes and honors classes. Um, I was <laughs> with a lot of um, Asians and um, white Americans. And um, in general, the classes in the high school, it was, it was pretty diverse. I was thankful for that experience. There were people from um, like Brazil, from, um, from Europe, uh, from different countries in Africa. And, uh, and so I got, I got to have different cultural influences that didn't necessarily help me. <laughs> Um, they were helpful in the sense I got to learn, learn more about the world, but um, I learned a lot of worldly things, unfortunately. Um, it was from my friends. I, I wasn't getting that education from my parents because they were dealing with their own situation. Um, and so I was learning about the world from my friends, and they, don't have, they didn't have the biblical um, worldview. And so a lot of inappropriate things um, were introduced to me. Um, thankfully, I, I, I rejected a lot of things, like say smoking and drugs, but um, there were also other advances that were not good. Um, but then at church, um, the influences were better um, because we were at, in the environment on the Sabbath where we were constrained to only do some activities, um, very sociable activities, but um, most of the friends were also going to public schools and their own families were struggling. And so um, I think all around, um, it was always to the world, to the world. Um, and so a lot of people thought, because I, w I did grow up in a pretty strict household that was sheltered, um, being a girl and my brother was not so much sheltered he went about doing what he wanted to do um, but a lot of people thought I would just go and rebel <laughs> after um, high school going into college um, I had the foundation to to do so to to rebel but God really sustained me and so when I did go to college, those, those thoughts came. Well, this is the time where I could just be free, do my own thing. Um, <laughs> I ended up going to one party my freshman year. And <laughs> I went with sneakers, um, a t-shirt, and jeans. So it didn't look like a party goer whatsoever. Um, the friends that I went with, they were sort of drunk already. And um, there was loud music that I was accustomed to from my childhood when I first came to the U.S. And I remember just the draw, just to start dancing and to just do what everybody else was doing. Um, but I, I stayed sober through it all. <laughs> and um, I ended up leaving um, with one friend. And the thing is, my, I had my roommate. Um, she was Muslim. She, she had decided not to go to that party that night. And I remember that was such a rebuke to me. Me, a Seventh-day Adventist, who's supposed to hold um, the Bible as a truth and to live it out. Me, who, who was telling her about jewelry, about the Sabbath, and um, having all these religious conversations with her. And she saw me step out that night and go um, to that party and come back <laughs> not any better um, and so from that time uh, from that freshman year then came the break the December break and I remember just at the just before break began I developed an allergy to dairy I didn't know it exactly at that time but I remember I would be eating an anything that I ate, I would just be scratching my face. My face would become hot. And it was during the break that I, I learned that um, I had developed a dairy allergy. And when I returned on campus, 
I started eating the pizzas again every single day, the ice cream, the desserts, and I started gaining <laughs> a weight. I gained 10 pounds and my allergies were still acting up. Um, but I was just so addicted to those foods. They were so good. Um, but I, I knew that they were not good for me. And so um, I decided that semester that I would take a job at the gym. My friend, who was also Seventh-day Adventist, the only other Seventh-day Adventist on the whole campus, uh, she got me a job at the gym. And so after my shift, I would work out for about an hour. And then I joined a running club. And, uh, and so about twice a, twice a week I would go running and then um, two other times in the week I would work out in the gym. And um, I, got, I lost the weight. Um, come back for sophomore year and the first semester I gained 10 pounds again. But God had something for me. By second semester sophomore year, um, February, I remember because it was around my birthday, and this group decided to come um, to the church that we were attending. I was in campus ministry, very much involved in that, and sometimes once a week we would go to a nearby church um, to still be a part of the bigger body. And they gave an announcement that there would be a seven day health and evangelism seminar. I had no idea what that meant, but the current president of the campus ministry, Axe, and her boyfriend at the time invited me to come with her, with them. And so I joined them, <laughs> not knowing what, what to expect. And it was only God's leading. Um, it was the first time that I learned about the three angels' messages, the health message, dress reform, Sabbath reform, it was completely different. And all seeing it from the Bible, I, I, I didn't know that these things had existed. Um, I didn't get that from the church that I had grown up in. And um, I remember just wrestling with God, um, but seeing also how attractive the whole message was. The, the way that they presented it, Jesus was at the center of every single doctrine, and I couldn't deny it. <laughs> and so he was drawing me with the cords of love and showing me that all these things were truth and that they would be good for me. And so um, after a while, that session ended, and I don't know what ever happened with my two friends, um, but I know for me, it, it completely changed my life. Um, I, I slowly started buying skirts and um, I should have given up the dairy already because I was allergic. But now knowing that it was coming straight from the Bible and from Jesus himself, um, I chose to give that up as well. And um, until the next year when I finally gave up eggs and fish and chicken and beef. Um, and in all my health improved so much. Um, I, my acne decreased tremendously. I didn't have to struggle as much. I still went to the gym as I now saw that it wasn't just for um, just looking good, um, but for my general health. Um, so God would be able to com communicate with me better. Um, so I was exercising on a regular basis and um, and I had a greater interest um, for the work of God. That family that had uh, taught the Seventh-day Evangelism series, um, they ended up coming my junior year to stay in that church that we were attending. And that was a major blessing. Um, it was the Wilbur family and Lance Wilbur became like a mentor to me. And um, he, he poured it into me as well. Um, and I got to see the, the, his family and how they lived. And that was an example of, of Christ for me to show that I could, I could make those changes. And there were a host of other people um, who I could see God had brought them on higher ground. And he was calling me to that higher ground as well. 
it was challenging because now I was more involved in um, a Christian um, group on campus, a choir, and we went to, to Sunday churches and performed there. And so I had the influence uh, on, from other Christians, and it was hard being di distinct in, a, in a, a more unique way with them or around them. Um, but God gave the strength, and um, they could tell. Um, so some, some people eventually, they would visit us on campus ministry, our campus ministry on Sabbaths. They would ask questions um, to me, and um, even... <laughs> it was great because from that family that had first taught the seven day series, I learned about medical missionary work and outpost centers. And I, I remember sharing it with my professor um, of black studies, Professor Cobham Sander, that woman. She, um, <laughs> she had unfortunately a negative experience with Christianity, um, but she was open to hearing. And as I expressed to her one dream, two dreams that God had given me, um, one of them, I was on stage all by myself with no decorations on the stage whatsoever. And there was a huge crowd in front of me. And I was just preaching with such zeal and enthusiasm. And um, the second dream, I was in the center and there was a crowd all around me. And we were protesting for something. And um, at the time, I, I realized it wasn't about um, Black Lives Matter or anything, but it was about um, the last days and the decision that we ha would have to make for God. And I told her these dreams, and she looked at me and said, Jane, you're going to be a medical missionary. And she didn't even know, I don't think, <laughs> what that meant for me. But to, for her to believe in me, in those dreams, um, even as a, a non-believer, in a sense, um, was really good. And <laughs> um, I thank her for that. Now it's 2017, my last year in college. And I was um, double majoring in French and Black Studies. And um, I had a lot of pressure from family and friends. What am I going to do with my life? Do I have a job set up? Of course, the typical questions that seniors usually get. And um, I would just be telling people, I have no idea. But <laughs> the college has told me that with my degrees, I can get any job. I'm going to a top university. And that would just open up doors because just name drop and that would just be it. I'll be set, so don't worry about me. God will take care of it. And I now realize I was very naive, um, but God still used that to direct me in the way that I should go. Um, he saw my desire to be a, a, a missionary, a medical missionary, completely different mindset than when I first started off in college. Um, and, uh, and so I graduated, um, without any job in prospect and, um, but my, my parents were hopeful still, um, because graduated near the top of my class and, um, we had connections with people in Boston, um, where I grew up. And, um, and so we, we started the job hunt. Um, I went to interview after interview, and I prepared myself. I did everything that the college had told me to do, um, but no doors opened up. To me, that was okay, um, because in that time, I had, God had me. For usually eight hours in the day, every single day, I would be in the Bible. I would be reading the Spirit of Prophecy. I would be watching videos um, from Restoration International, the family camp. And um, I was learning so much. So before, in 2016, with that family coming in, 
they had been showing me what they had learned from the Bible about the three angels' messages and the health message. But now at this time, I was getting to know it for myself and to see um, that God had it all planned out. Um, from the beginning, um, these beautiful messages to change our lives. And I remember just being in bed at times wondering, why didn't anybody tell me this before? My life could have been different. My family could have been different. It didn't need to be broken up. Um, but he was still giving those precious gems. And so I had to use it. Um, and so um, I, t I ended up taking a job at a uh, startup tech company doing their social media. And um, just to hold off to please some people. And... Um, it, it was flexible hours, and so I still could um, be able to study the Word at times and, and um, learn from different people like Barbara O'Neill and um, things in uh, ministry. And um, God was just building me up and building me up. And um, it came to the point where I had to let go of that job because I... I, there was nothing fulfilling in it. I wasn't doing anything to help anybody else, really, just telling them about computers and tech, tech things. And um, so that was Sept uh, September of 2017 all the way until January of 2018. And, um, and it's then that I started babysitting. And um, the, the lady that I was babysitting for, she told me about this place called um, Tacoa Missions up in New Hampshire. And um, it just seemed like everything fit from the things that I studied that they had it. And so I decided <laughs> the week of my birthday that I would apply there. And they interviewed me, and they accepted me, and then by the next week, my mom was driving me up to New Hampshire. And that was another transformational time of my life. Um, I, I met some people there who have become friends from, from now, and I, I believe lifelong friends. And um, from there, I got to, to Canvas. I got to um, do some Bible work, intern at um, uh, hygienic restaurants and lifestyle centers in New Hampshire and Massachusetts and New York. Met a lot of people, learned a lot so that it wasn't just theory anymore, but practice. And that's exactly what God wants for all of us, especially as, as, as young people. Um, having that energy and the mind to do the work and to believe what his word says, to follow after the pattern of the pioneers and to see the success that they had um, and to see it lived out in the present day. After um, that experience came COVID. <laughs> and so I was kicked out, well, not kicked out, we're closed out. And um, uh, I had to move back home. And in that time, God had already prepared me with the, the ministry over there at Tekoa. And I began friendship ministry in my neighborhood. Um, I remember walking um, the streets and I would see people. They would look so sad. And God spoke to my mind and said, you have something they don't have. And so from that day on, I would, I, I would take tracks with me. And I would take two walks a day, and on those walks, I would be just passing out tracks. And um, for the most part, I would say about 99% of the people accepted the tracks, which was helpful for me because I wasn't very keen on getting rejected. Um, and uh, I began even, as I said, friendship ministry. There were two neighbors, and um, one of them, I, I began doing hydro, hydro treatments and massage um, just to help alleviate some of the suffering that they were going through. Um, sharing recipes and giving out <laughs> food, um, doing homeless ministry. Um, all these things were a very shy person, but I prayed to God for a partner, 
but nothing. And so I continued pressing on um, by myself and God gave the strength. He directed me to, to the houses that I needed to go to, to the people who needed his help and his hope. Um, and so that's how I pretty much passed through COVID um, until two of my friends that I had gone to Tekoa with, um, we decided that we would uh, begin our own ministry. We would seek to start a hygienic restaurant, just like we saw what should happen in Inspiration. And um, so we got a sponsor and um, we're looking out for locations to put in Boston. Unfortunately, um, we were misused, <laughs> mishandled um, through that experience. But God used what was meant for evil and turned it into good. My parents, at the same time that my friends and I were trying to set up that hygienic restaurant, my parents got up like Sarah and Abraham and <laughs> left us, my brother and I, and um, traveled over to Arizona and seeking country property. That in itself was a miracle because when I first came um, back home, it was strange, all these doctrines that I was talking about. They had learned it and known it when they were younger, but over the, over the years had dropped these things about country living and the health message and all these things. And so when I started telling them and giving them Bible studies, um, they kind of laughed at me, mocked me. Um, but months after, I saw that the seed became fruit. And so they left and traveled to Arizona, um, went to different places seeking a country property for us to live. My brother was in a very dark spot um, and ended up in a psych ward. And so these two situations with their children and my parents are gone and there's so much stress. Um, <laughs> so much trauma. Um, but in that darkness, God pulled us out of Boston to save my brother and I. I truly believe that. And eventually my parents landed in Tennessee. Um, where we live now <laughs> and they got a cabin on five acres um, good enough for us to start gardening and to learn um, some things <laughs> um, that were very practical um, and um, we we got involved in some ministries here and there some churches january of 2021 um, a situation at home happened where our lives were in danger and I cried out to God <laughs> saying, God, <laughs> either um, <laughs> you bring somebody here uh, to pull us out because um, I don't see any way out. And uh, that was January 2nd. And a few days later, um, I received a very strange phone call saying that I was interested in the student program at Butler Creek Health Education Center. And I told that person, who in the world told you that? <laughs> um, and um, the connection was bad, so I had to call back the next day. And I told them that my home situation and my financial situation, I want to come, but I'm not able to come um, just by myself. It would be very risky for me to leave. And um, the president was willing um, that they would do an escape route um, to, to get us out. Um, and so, within a few days, by January 9th, I was here on campus. Um, my mom had come with me, and during orientation, she heard of all the, the things that they do here. And she was like, what's the tuition here again? I'm like, I don't know. But 
um, she wanted to come. And God gave her promises, just like he gave to me, um, that she would be here. And I told the administration that my mom would be here. And she applied, and two weeks later she came. Um, from then, it's been a very challenging experience. We came very angry and, um, and bitter. Um, God has provided us with people who have, again, poured into us. I think that's, that's the testimony. God pouring into, into broken vessels, making us into vessels of honor. Um, he's given us people. They supplied us with clothes, with um, food. Um, people at the church sponsored us so that we wouldn't have to pay for the, the tuition. And um, they, they just loved on us. And um, some months after, they asked us to stay with them on, on staff. And um, just from then, I, I've been seeing that God um, has a work for me here, um, helping to, to show the people in this, in this neighborhood that there is help um, for their health, mental health, addictions, and um, physical health. And I do believe um, that God is still leading me. I don't know where the journey will end, um, but I'm thankful to be on it. There are many, many adventures with God, and I, I don't regret any of them. Um, most of the time, it has been me that has made the mistakes and made it harder. But even then, He has not wasted any of the pain. Um, all the trauma has been for good and has been able, he has been able to use me um, to share with other sisters um, what good things he can do. What I see God doing for me now, I don't know exactly how he's going to work it out, um, but that he's been involving me more in music. From the time that I moved to Tennessee, um, I remember going to uh, the Waynesboro Church, the first time stepping in there for a week of prayer, and they asked me to sing on that Friday, and then on the, sab the sab two Sabbaths later, asking for a special music. And um, that, for two months, different churches that I went to, um, asking for special music. And here, um, before there wasn't anything music related per se, um, but the administration has asked that I would do a music class for the students and then do a, sort of some music therapy with the guests. And um, which really excited me because music is such a beautiful part of my life. And, um, and since to 2018, having the experience of writing my own songs as well, from the encouragement of a dear brother, um, Andrew Jacques, and a sister, Kanisha Nash, now Etienne, um, they showed me that I didn't have to just stay as a singer, but I could become a composer as well and be a singer. And um, being here, um, I've also picked up on um, an instrument um, called the lyre harp. Uh, instrument that David in the Bible used to play. And um, I just want to share with you a song that I've kept with me ever since 2018 because I see that it is, uh, it is the process that God has been doing for me. Um, it says, But he knoweth the way I take when he hath tried me. I shall come forth as gold, but he knoweth the way I take when he hath tried me. I shall come forth as gold. Job 23.10 um, That text truly has been showing that um, I am a precious stone, a tried stone, and 
God has something for me and his church, um, for all of us really, if we accept the calling that he has for us. It will not be easy, um, but it will be worth it. And I want to thank my God for all that he has done for me in my life and allowing that I can be a vessel for him and even better than when he first birthed me. I am Jane Pierre, and this is what the Lord has done for me. But he knoweth the way I take when he hath tried me. I shall come forth as gold, but he knoweth.